We all know that golf is an exceptionally hard game, but don't worry, because in this video, I've got 23 ways in which you can improve. Now I've split this into four categories. We're gonna be looking at equipment, we're gonna be looking at the technical side of golf, so how you can improve your swing, but we're also gonna be looking at the health and the mental aspects which are often overlooked. I've absolutely no doubt that one of these tips is gonna help you, but get down into those comments below and let us know what your advice would be. Golf is a target orientated sport. And yet I can probably say safely that most people watching this will not have actually worked on their alignment in ages. And I'm not just talking about throwing some alignment sticks down at a driving range. I'm actually talking about on the course checking where you're aiming. The quickest guide I can give to simple parallel alignment, you want the club to be aiming down at the target and you want your feet to be in a parallel alignment to that line. Think about a set of train tracks. You wanna be on the inside track and you want the club face aiming along the outside. Now, a very quick and effective way to help you with the driver is to alter your tee height. What we want to see is half of the ball to be sitting above the top line of the driver. Now, what this allows the golfer to do is to get the driver traveling more underneath the golf ball. Teeing the ball up like this allows a golfer to hit up on the ball a little bit more. And this can help achieve better launch characteristics. Higher launch, lower spin, leading to nice long drives. Very, very simple to do, but also very effective. Now, when I was an assistant pro, it used to make me weep how many people came in with grips that hadn't been changed in five, 10, 15 years. Think about it this way. The grip is your only point of contact with the golf club. If it's slippy, shiny, and disgusting like this example, which belongs to Mick who's holding the camera, your ability to grip and control this club is gonna be compromised. So if you have money to spend and you're thinking about what to get, if you've not changed your grips in a while, get new grips. Honestly, it can make such a massive difference to feel and perform. It cannot be overestimated exactly how much exaggeration it takes to change a golf swing. It's amazing how many lessons I've given where a golfer feels like they've changed their swing by miles and they've managed to move it only a matter of inches. The only way to tell what you've actually done is through feedback. And one very powerful tool that pretty much everyone has access to now is a camera and video. Now I've got one of these Gorilla Pods off Amazon. I think this one was about 15 quid and I've got a little phone attachment for it. That was about a tenner. So all in, I've got a 25 pound mobile filming unit. And it's pretty simple. I've got my bag here, which is about hip high. Now that is pretty much perfect for filming your swing. So using this, I'm gonna wrap it around the edge of my bag. And generally what you wanna be seeing is the ball, if you're a right-hander, to be more towards the right of the screen. And this will mean that your hands are a lot more central. Now there are two main angles that you can use, down the line and face on. Face on is very simple, it's just facing directly at you. And you just wanna make sure you've got enough room either side so you can see your swing. Again, try and get it about waist high. As with everything, video can be a fantastic tool. It can also be a dangerous tool. Try and use it in conjunction with lessons so you know exactly what you are looking out for. I've got a really cool mental trick that you can use if you get angry, if you get frustrated on the golf course. I'm gonna leave a link to a video here. This is how Tiger Woods gets over bad shots and it's a fantastic method to use. All I'm gonna say here is that if you hit a bad shot, if you're still angry about it by the time you reach your ball, you need to work on the ability to leave bad shots behind. You can't go back and change anything, so there's no point in being angry about it. All that's gonna do is interfere with your next shot. Now, if you've had your golf clubs for a number of years, I can almost guarantee that on some of them, at least the loft and the lie will not be the same as when you bought them. This is especially prevalent if you have a softer forged iron. Think about it this way. You will have spent so much time hitting a iron into the ground, clipping trees, hitting stones, all kinds of chaos. And if you have a soft iron, the chances are that at least on some of these impacts, the loft and the lie angle would have changed. Now, if you've been custom fit for your golf clubs, this means that what you bought and what you got fitted for might not actually be what you're playing with. So if you've had your clubs for a while, get to your local PGA Pro, get them to check the loft and the lies. This might be very important if you're a type of golfer who sees clubs going similar distances. So if your eight iron is suddenly going the same length as your six iron, things might have changed.
If you're someone who goes to the driving range and just hits ball after ball after ball, stop. The chances are that's not actually going to be doing you much good. A driving range bears very little resemblance to what happens on a golf course. The quickest way to improve and to get meaningful practice done is to start practicing under pressure. Now that means playing games with yourself, holding yourself accountable, in keeping score, having targets, not just getting to a driving range and working on your swing technique all the time. Yes, you need to do technical practice, but once you've got a feeling of a swing, actually just repeating that over and over and over again is not gonna do you much good when you get on the golf course. I'm gonna leave a link here and explain how you can practice a little bit more under pressure. So Channel Part and the ShotScope have teamed up with me to make this video, and I absolutely love what they're doing from a tech standpoint, but also, from a stats standpoint as well. So I kept my stats throughout this season by using a GPS watch and also tags in the end of my clubs. And this means that all my stats are automatically uploaded to the ShotScope software and I can track my performance, but that's not all. But what this also means is that every single ShotScope user who tracks their data, their statistics are also available to mine for information. So for example, the amount of approaches that golfers leave short of the green is truly amazing. So these are the stats from ShotScope, like I said, collected over millions of rounds, and they show a consistent issue with golfers leaving approaches short of the green. Now this is a general impression of golfers. The idea is to understand your own stats, because you could see that you're missing more to the right of a green, to the left of a green, to the right of a fairway, to the left of the fairway, whatever it may be. If you use stats correctly, you can get to the root of issues within your golf and then apply the correct remedies. Without understanding that, it's really hard to target improvement. Water, H2O. This has been a slow realization for me about how much of an advantage you will gain by being hydrated on the golf course. Now, drinking water helps prevent dehydration, but do not think of this as being stranded in a lonely desert somewhere with vultures circling overhead. If you're on the golf course and you feel thirsty, the chances are you're already dehydrated. Now, this means bad moods, it means unclear thinking. It also apparently means constipation. None of these things you especially want on a golf course. So yes, make sure you drink ah, the aqua. Now guys, if you can, I would always, always recommend you getting lessons. There are thousands of golf pros out there, all able to give you really, really good advice. But guys, if you can't afford lessons, fortunately, this is the internet and there is so much free advice out there. For example, the Swing Quest channel, loads of coaching videos which you can check out. As you can see here, David has not been watching any of them. I've done a little bit of experimentation this year between playing slowly, or should I say methodically, and playing fast. So I'm talking about no practice swings, no pre-shot routines, just getting up to the ball, picking the club you think, and hitting it. And I've got to be honest, I was surprised about how little difference there is between the scores. So as an experiment, the next time you guys go out to play, check the conditions, get your yardage, figure out what club you're going to hit, and then just get on with it. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Walk quickly to your next shot and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. And actually just see if there's any difference in your scores. I've got a feeling that you'll be able to play faster and actually not see too much of a drop off in performance. There will come a time in your golfing career when you start to strike the ball relatively consistently. And at that point, you are gonna have to know your numbers. So for example, what I'm gonna do here is zap this flag, and that is 123 yards away. Now here, I'm gonna throw up what I class as my stock distances. But also using ShotScope, I can overlay what my average distances are with each club as well. Now studying that information, get out to the coppers below. What do you think I would hit from here? Putting, 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 putting. One of the biggest separating factors between really low handicap golfers and really high handicap golfers is their ability on the green. Short scope stats show that from long distance, actually high handicap golfers and low handicap golfers, there's not a huge amount of difference. But as you start to get closer to the hole, there is a separating factor. And over the course of the season, these percentages, if you think about how many shots this will cost a higher handicap golfer, it's huge. So if you wanna lower your scores, focus on zero 
to six feet. Even if you can't hit the ball well, there's no reason over that distance you can't be as good as a scratch golfer. Now I've got two equipment suggestions for you at the same time. This is the process that I go through when I'm in competitions and the shot scope gear that I'm using here, it's all legal in pretty much every competition that you guys are gonna play. So I've got a Pro LX laser rangefinder. And what I will do with this is zap my target and get an exact number. So this flag is towards the back of the green on the first here at Reddish, and it's 163 yards away. Now, because I already know my numbers that we've already spoken about, I can go into my bag and pick the correct club, and I've got an A time. I could also zap the bunkers and some other things, but this leads on to my next equipment recommendation. So I've got the H4, which is a magnetic GPS device, which clicks onto the bottom of this rangefinder. But for a lot of the year, I've been using the ShotScope watch. And what I do in competition is combine the two. But what I also want to know is the yardage to the front, the middle and the back of this green. It's a blue flag. Now that means the pin is towards the back. So I want to make sure that I don't hit a club which is going to overshoot this green. I'm 150 yards to the middle and I'm 165 yards to the back of the green. Now 165 yards is my A time. I don't want to go over the back so I'm going to put that away. It's 150 yards to the center and I hit this club 155. So theoretically this should put me in the center of the green maybe just a bit further on. No pressure. Oh, I thinned it a bit. Is it going to be okay? Oh, actually worked out absolutely perfect. Pin high, a little bit low on the face, made it shoot. But hey, that's the thing. I calculated all this data. If I did that with my A-tie-in, I'd be over the back and out of bounds. As the golf club moves through impact, it collects all kinds of rubbish. Water, mud, grass. And what clean grooves do is they channel that away from the impact area helping to ensure a nice clean strike. So David, who works with us, I have got his five iron here. Now on the face of this club, all seems okay, but actually, if you look into the grooves, they are jam packed full of golf course. You're welcome, by the way, David. He's gonna be shocked, isn't he? When he gets out of the course of his five iron flying miles. So give your clubs a good clean whenever you can. If you really want to strip a club down as well, if it's like, covered in rust and you don't like that, but you just want to go to work, stick your clubs in a bucket of coke for an hour. It contains phosphoric acid, which will help really strip anything away. I can sum course management up very simply. Don't try and play a shot that you haven't first of all practiced. So in this example, I've rolled just off the green here and I'm looking at this, there's not a lot of surface to work with. The pin is tight to the fringe. I've got this slope to come up and I'm thinking flop shot. Let's get it to space and let's get it dropping around this pin, but I haven't practiced a flop shot. What will generally happen is that a golfer will get over the ball thinking, oh yeah, oh, I see you do this on telly. I reckon I could get a really good flop shot here. Bad things. Whereas the chances are you've probably played a chip and run before. So I'm just gonna get my nine iron and I'm just gonna try and bump it up this bank and get it onto the green. It might not be quite as spectacular, but it's probably gonna be more effective than a big fancy flop shot that you might not have tried before. But this goes for all over the course. You're in the trees and you think, oh, I'm gonna hit a nice 80 yard hook. Chances are you might just have to chip it out. It might be a bit boring at times, but the chances are your score's gonna improve and you'll lose less balls. If winter is drawing in, you can't get to a driving range, the course is closed, whatever it may be, and you fancy having a little bit of a practice at home. It's a great place to change things as far as movement patterns are concerned. We've already spoken about practicing under pressure, but actually at home, this is a great spot to change things technically. And the best thing you can do is slow motion swings. Let's say you wanted to change something. So you wanted to try and open up that left hip a little bit more with impact. So rather than just swinging and practicing and try and get that feeling, take it back and then move super, 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 duper, whooper, blooper, Amari Cooper, Stormtrooper, electric scooter, slow. What slow-mo swings allow you to do is feel things a lot more acutely. When you swing at a driving range or when you hit balls, you're moving very fast and it's often hard to get the feelings that you want. So using slow motion swings is a great way to embed movement pattern changes. There are a few things that can help you improve as a golfer faster 
than playing with better players. It's been consistently shown in sports, but also the wider world, that if you do an activity with people who are better at it than you, you'll learn things, you'll pick up new ways of thinking, new tricks, new tips. Now this is very easy for me to say, but if you are gonna get new clubs and you can switch, maybe try and get something which is a little bit more forgiving. We've got two clubs here at extreme ends of the market. We've got a bladed eight iron and then a super forgiving iron here as well. So you can see here a massive difference in the sole and a quite ludicrous difference as you look from top down. Now I'm not gonna lie, this Haywood iron, this eight iron looks so much better than this Wilson launch pad, but generally this is gonna be more used to you than this. Helps it get up in the air easier, it's more forgiving, and will probably be more fun to actually play with. One of the easiest and best ways to improve by changing equipment is focusing on the golf ball. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna throw up some examples of golf balls that you need to be looking at. You've got your premium golf ball, you've got your mid-range golf ball, and then you've got a cheap golf ball. Unless you are a low handicapper, there's no point going for this premium golf ball. The chances are you're not gonna see that much of a difference in scoring if you go for the mid-range or the cheaper golf ball. Also focus on your needs. What are you after? Are you after some distance? Are you after spin? Use that to help guide your choice when getting a golf ball. So if at all possible, you should try and walk a golf course. There are obvious health benefits to this, but there's a little bit more to it than that. You know, it puts you in touch with the golf course a little bit more than you otherwise would be. To take your feet away from a golf course is to not play this game how it was intended. Now, I know a lot of people watching this, certainly in the United States, with a course that was built after 1970, will almost be forced into using the golf cart because of paths like this. You know, there's massive gaps in between holes and it's almost impossible to walk. But if you do have the opportunity, make sure you use both feet, get back in contact with the course, and it will make you healthier. It's as simple as that. So, Training eight. Yeah, not really. Although I swear, I have seen somebody do that. They were struggling fatting the golf ball and they thought the best way to cure this was to put a ball on their phone screen and try and clip it off. I will leave you to predict how that turned out. And the thing with training aids is there's just so many. For literally any ailment a golfer might have, there is a training aid which can help, but Here's what I would suggest. Not all training aids are created equal, and not all training aids will help you with your specific problem, even if they say they should. If you can get a lesson, do. And then ask the pro what training aid they would recommend to help you with your swing issue. Guys, just wanna say a massive thank you for watching, and a huge thank you to ShotScope as well for being partners of the channel. If you do wanna check out more ShotScope content, you can watch here, and if you do want more help with your game, check out the Swing Quest channel here.